This is such a great interview between an England cricketer and her dad, and you're going to get loads from this as they share stories of how they juggled that parent-child relationship uh, through Anya's development and into her years of great success with the England team. As always with these interviews, I just want to say that uh, this is a great story. Take what you can from it, contextualise it to your own story. There's always a danger when we interview parents of famous athletes that we think that's a copyable blueprint. There is loads I'd love you to take up in how Anya and Ian relate together, but just make sure you're contextualising it to your child's context needs and sport. If you're new here, why not hit subscribe uh, and welcome to new subscribers. It's good to see you too. Please do like, share um, this video because it's got such deep, rich insight. Uh, enough from me. Enjoy. Oh, I'm absolutely thoroughly delighted to be joined by uh, Anya Shrubsall and Ian Shrubsall. Anya is a bit of a hero of mine. Um, I show a tweet that her dad did um, after England won the Women's Cricket World Cup a number of years ago. And um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. But Ian, why don't you just introduce your daughter for us so that we can um, hear a proud father speak. Okay, this is Anya. I've known her since she was born. Um, She's, she's um, my middle child of three. I've got an older brother, Tom, um, younger sister, Lauren. And um, what do I tell you about Anya? Um, she is um, sport crazy, every single sport that you can imagine. I thought I was sport crazy until I, uh, until I introduced Anya to the world and she has taken it to a whole new level. We, um, we, I, I think we have a particularly strong bond and that's not just about following our beloved Portsmouth Football Club, who went out of the playoffs yesterday. But um, look, she's done pretty well for herself in her time playing cricket. She, in my view, the, the world was of sport was open to her in all sorts of ways, but cricket was the one that uh, excited her the most. And I couldn't have been more proud of her on that day in whenever it was, 2017, when she uh, she didn't do badly in the World Cup final. And you tell us about your dad. Um, this is my dad, Ian. He's been my dad since I was born. <laughs> um, oh, he's a, a PE teacher at Kingswood, has been for, well, pretty much all your adult life, as far as I can work out. Um, he has been, uh, I guess, a huge influence, a huge supporter of me, along with um, my mum, Sam, the two of them. I, I would like to think of, have um, brought me up pretty well, have taught me a lot of things about how to deal with success, how to deal with failure, how to deal with all of those things. Um, from a young age, he was down at Bath Cricket Club with me, badgering him to throw me balls so I could bat and, and bat against me when I wanted to bowl. And um, yeah, being someone who's been there for me all the way through my career. Brilliant. Now, I'm fascinated by that. What sport would have you done then if, if it hadn't been cricket? What? what? Um, I think I'd have tried football next. Um, I did a lot of swimming when I was younger, but there's a lot of about swimming, like being in the pool at 5am and stuff like that, that's not that attractive. Uh, I played a lot of rugby, so they were probably the four that I would have tried first. Fantastic. And then I'd have tried anything else I could. And, at what, and Ian, obviously you were just happy that she was just dipping her toe in any kind of sport. At what age then did you, did you specialise, Anya? What? Um, it probably was when I dad will probably remember better than me but probably around kind of 14 15 16 um probably became just cricket I kind of slowly had to drop things as the demands increased so I, I swam for quite a long time and then I uh, did it a couple of nights a week and then they wanted me four or five nights or mornings well I wanted to play loads of other sports so I kind of stopped doing that and um Foot, uh, you had the odd thing with football and, and rugby, but mainly football. I don't, I don't know if the rules have changed now. I hope they have. But when I was playing, as soon as you turned 12, you couldn't play boys football anymore. So that cut a lot of the football that I was playing out. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say probably around 14, 15, 16 really was when I, it became much more about cricket. Ian, did that happen naturally or were there conversations at home? Was she going all... 
No, no, I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember ever having a conversation that said, "Well, this is the direction I, you know, really want to go in," or you know, "I, I don't want to do this anymore," or, or any of those. It, it just, it just kind of happened by. Uh, I don't know by osmosis. It just, you know, things that conversation. I can remember the kind of thinking around the swimming, which was, which was a particular strength, and and working out that while she loved it, it, um, it, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't her passion. It wasn't what really floated her boat. Um, and it kind of got narrowed down and narrowed down over time. I guess, like she's saying, to football and um, cricket. And then and then just a bit of um, a kind of perfect storm of things with um, female cricket, boys cricket, the, um, the setup at Bath, um, getting involved more and more with Somerset and um, being put onto the Somerset Cricket Academy. Those sort of things kind of tilted the balance in favour of that's that's where actually that's where my passion really lies and this is something I really want to want to see what I can do with. I love that so I'm, I'm just hearing passion driven really and I'm guessing any I'm hearing that you didn't feel any pressure to do cricket it just that was yeah. No I just I, I love sport and I still do now and um, if I could play more sports then then I absolutely would and I've try and sneak some non-contact, relatively low risk sports in where I can. And yeah, it was very much, and that's been something that has been consistent the whole way through. If I, t I know if I turned around to mum and dad tomorrow and said, you know what, I'm, I've had, an, I've thought about it. I've had enough. I'm, I'm done. I think they'd go, are you absolutely sure? But if I went, yeah, absolutely sure. Thought really long and hard about it. They go, absolutely. That's fine. I've, I've never, um, well, I would like to think, and I've never, ever felt like this. I'm First and foremost, I am their daughter, and they have always wanted what's best for me. I am not a, well, obviously, I'm a cricketer, but yeah. that, that's, that's not what I am. And I have 100% felt that all the way through any sport that I've played. It's very much been me really wanting to do it and, and do everything that needs to be, not them wanting it wanting it for me if that makes sense oh, that's lovely, lo lovely i love it that segues nicely into um one of the reasons i was really excited about this conversation uh was because of this tweet here which i'll just put up now which um if anyone's seen me speak i don't know probably eight thousand parents have seen me speak in the last three years with this tweet um it, live and i probably retweeted it um a number of times uh I, I, ian tell us a story about this this tweet Okay, well, this this is actually this is the World Cup of 2017 again, uh, and this is about the this is the semi final of that that um, competition where England beat South Africa with about well I, I may be wrong two balls to spare maybe um, yeah. where Anya <laughs> to be honest with you didn't do an awful lot in the game she bowled pretty well she'll tell you she bowled rubbish but she bowled okay and, and then she got to a situation England got themselves in a mess really chasing and and got to a situation where Anya strode out to bat amazing tension ridiculous tension in the ground um, Anya strode out to bat with three balls remaining in the game and I think two runs needed and so Bear in mind that she's rubbish at batting. She'd have been number 10. Well, she's not rubbish, but let's say she's rubbish. She came in at number 10, and so they were right up against it. And, and the balance had maybe swung to South Africa, at which point she just wanders down the wicket and hits the ball for four as if but what you were worried about, this is all done. Cue massive scenes of celebration, people running on the pitch, the crowd going bonkers. But in amongst all that, the absolute devastation of the South African players. And look, all I'm saying here is whilst, you know, that moment where she strode out, and even though I know that she wasn't feeling necessarily super confident inside, she gave off this real confident vibe. She, she hit the boundary. She did absolutely the right thing. She ran to her teammate and she celebrated. Yet within all that going on and that tendency to run around and whatever you, she was able to have a thought for what the other players as the South Africans who a minute earlier were thinking we are going to the World Cup final, we are going to win such a significant game, not just in this World Cup, but for South African cricket. And that's Darnay Van Leerkirk, the South African captain, who was desolate and, and Anya's seen in that moment the, the kind of the need to just go and show respect to them for uh, and, and not to over-celebrate, to show respect to them 
for what they've been through in that process. And 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 I think she knows she's been there in in similar situations before, so she knows what that feels like. Well, who taught you to blag being confident then, Anya? Strolling out to the middle with three walls to go. I don't really know. I've got no idea because I know for a fact, obviously, as as always happens, there was a, the camera was in the dressing room a lot, and I was. Um, there's a we were at Bristol. There's a balcony in front, and then there's an area behind. And I was sat in the area behind, and I think Jenny Gunn got dropped in the first ball of the over. And I know there there's footage of me basically sat with my hands in my head, um, my head in my hands, waiting as the next person in. So I know for a fact I wasn't confident. But um, yeah, I don't really know. You just fake it till you make it, don't you? <laughs> I love how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a good twelve-step phrase there. Um, the uh, but what I'm really interested in is is what you said there. Ian. Anya didn't think she bowled very well. I I think she did. What what kind of conversations do you have after matches like that? I mean, do, uh, okay. So so now Anya that, gets on the phone and says, "Dad, I was a bit naff there," and you're like, uh, "No, not really, not really." I mean, look, the 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 way we've always worked with her. And she's already alluded to this. Is is it's it's her playing the game. It's her making those decisions. It's it's her, um, you know, it's on her skills and her decision making that things rest. Um, so so she's got to she's got to own what she does, and she's got to be accepting of, you know when things haven't gone wrong, not look for excuses, not say, oh, I didn't do this because the wind was blowing, I was bowling the wrong end or whatever it is. Just to own what you do. And, and she is the best person I know, uh, actually. In fact, she's she's a harshest critic with, by some distance. She's, she's really good at analysing how it's gone, what went well, what didn't go so well, um, parking what she needs to park, that, that that happened, it just, that's the way sport goes. And actually thinking about the bits that, that she needs that, that that she has got some uh, control over, and working out what she needs to do to make that right in the future. That's all she's done there and throughout that tournament. Look, you, you ask her about her tournament as a whole in the World Cup, and and she'll tell you it was pretty ropey. It started particularly ropey, and it kind of gradually crept better. But there was no indication in what she'd done previously about what was going to happen in the final, that's for sure. But it had been progressing well. She, she's a fiercest critic. She doesn't need me to tell her when I think she's done well or when she hasn't done well. The only real conversations we have, we, do, we, never, we don't have very technical conversations, and we haven't for a long time, because her, her knowledge, her understanding, her kind of grasp of what's going on is way beyond mine. And, and I like to think I was wise enough way back to work out that was the case. And, and, and to say, it's your game, you're doing it, you don't need me. The only thing we do do occasionally is we just talk generalities about the game. I might say to her, and you, you know, do you want to talk about this? And she might say, no, it's too raw. I'm really, I'm really fed up with this. I don't want to talk about it. But then at some point down the line, she sometimes asks my opinion, what did I think, you know? And, and I, just, I just give it to her straight what I really believe, because I don't see any point in in telling her, oh, you were really unlucky here, or you, you know, if that's not the case, if you bowl rubbish, you bowl rubbish. It's simple as everybody bowls rubbish from time to time. Um, but but also, if she says, oh, I thought I was really poor today, and I thought she was, she wasn't that bad. I, I, I might counter with giving her that. But but really, we talk in generalities about the game and. Um, framing things tactically and how you're thinking rather than we definitely don't go into any well have you tried to do this or tried to do that, that that's not my role that's that's her her role to work that out with her coaches that she trusts and she goes to when she needs that but quite frankly she doesn't need my input because she knows far more about it than than i've ever done and it sounds like your dad probably models that your dad's been quite honest and realistic about himself there is that where you've got a chunk of that from obviously other coaches other family members as well do you think can you get a bit of credit there for being a bit of a blunt west countryman who just gives says it as it is or? west countryman i'm a southerner it's just southerner. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, um, <laughs> I, I i i think so yeah and it's i think i touched on it before um, it's been something that I think has been really crucial to me all the way through my career. And I don't want to take all the lime, I don't want to take the limelight away from dad, but it was definitely mum and dad. They're quite, they're quite different characters and they offer, they offer lots of different things, but it's something that 
Um, they're both installed in me throughout my career is, is a kind of, um, and not in a, it sounds harsh. This is not in a harsh way, but a kind of no excuses thing. We're, we're very honest as a, we're very honest as a family. Um, we, and this is all of us brothers and sisters as well. We take the mickey out of each other. It's something rotten. We try not to take things too serious. They've been huge in keeping my feet on the, keeping my feet on the ground. I would like to think it, it hasn't, it hasn't been a super hard task all the time but that's something that all the way through my career has has been something that um i've been big on and, and mum and dad have been really big on as well and and i think that's really helped me because i I've, i play so much sport and so much youth sport and you see so many examples of the opposite happening and it's uh, in my opinion it's crippling to the to the child or or young adult or whatever that's trying to play the sport so it's been something that's been huge for me and i think has really helped my career i mean i i'll i'll add to that if i can richard uh, the, the combo of sam and i i think is 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 quite effective certainly well, I, I like to think it's been quite effective for anya uh, i i've come from things from a very very sporty background um, so I think I think the sportiness of it, and and it sounds a bit sad, really, but I can I can almost see what's going through Anya's mind because in so many things she's so similar to me. Sam comes to it from a background that is so not sporty you would not believe it. She's watched endless games of cricket, and honestly, she still hasn't got a clue what's going on. Was that a good ball? Was it? You know, it's like that conversation you have with her. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but, what, what she, but what she does is, is she comes at it from a real kind of human point of view and um, the, the phrase the phrase that gets used quite a lot in stuff that I read and what have you now better better people make better players it you know couldn't have been true it, you know that wasn't a phrase when Anya was growing up but but actually that's what that's the that's the way that Sam has always gone at it the you know the better person you are the better you will be at whatever you do whether it's a cricketer or a, a, any other job you care to mention so little things like um you know how many times have we been at cricket games where we've seen a, somebody get out as a child and they've come off crying and it's the end of the world well I can remember Sam in the in <laughs> sounds pretty harsh but but saying to Anya look if, you, if you're going to cry about this when you get out I'm not bringing you I'm, I'm actually not bringing you to play because this isn't important enough to cry over and and, and Anya knowing that 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 would be the case that that would be the case if she was going to cry about cricket little games of cricket then 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 we were not going to spend our time taking her to something that was going to upset her because it's just not worth it. So those sort of kind of attitude, that sounds like quite a harsh thing, but, but look, it's true. And, and no, I, I, I think if you were harsh about that, everything, be, but well, well, I think, I think for me, it's brilliant. It's a great story because you, you obviously, in, you get sport and there are loads of, mums and dads out there who get the sport and are really overbearing with their sport knowledge and I think you've been really humble I really like what you've said and um about your approach but then there are lots of parents um like Sam who won't know anything about sport and they actually feel quite intimidated by the I mean, she, of knowledge and, she, and, lives and, and she, she lives in dreams when Annie's playing though she's she's actually a nightmare because she just everything she's so fraught and, and not because she wants Anya to be the star or to to you know get the most wickets or anything you feel that it, it's just about how Anya feels. She's thinking if Anya doesn't play well, she will feel so bad in herself. She'll feel so disappointed. That's the that's the that's the direction Sam comes from all the time. Mine is more about well, you know, she's just a bit, you know, she's just born a little bit too short, or for goodness sake, bowl was short one to you know up her nose for, to stop her sitting on the front foot or whatever it is. That that's kind of just the different ways we look at the game, but that combo just as I, I think has worked quite well not just for Anya I, I believe for all three of our children who have varying sporting kind of um, well, you know, and I, and as you say, I mean better people make better sportsmen or teachers or businessmen absolutely or people work in charity. absolutely but, um, it's, it's, the list is exhaustive of what just better people make don't they but I think mm. it, that is really encouraging 
um, to hear the impact of both a parent who understands the sport and a parent who doesn't understand the sport for parents because that, that is one of the comments I get from a lot of parents, often mums, not always, but often mums who say, I don't understand the sport, how can I help them, Rich? And I'm like, to be honest with you, I think you're in the best boat because you, you know, you're not going to confuse them with unnecessary tactics. You can just work on loving them for being who they are as an individual who happens to be good at whatever other sports, a bit like how you introduced Derek Beanie and yeah. I mean, I, in some ways, um, as a passionate England fan, I don't overly want to bring this up, but, but last, last season, the Ashes, um, th that was a difficult time. Um, wh what did mum and dad do well during that, Anya? I mean... I get it. It's just... Um, it's just being there really uh, it it probably is as simple as that I think uh, they recognized and obviously probably dad more than mum that there were whole swathes of that I didn't I for for obvious reasons did not want to talk about the like guy found I found last summer probably from a cricketing point of view I've had challenging summers with injury but from a cricketing point of view one of the hardest because well we lost a lot. I really didn't play particularly. I didn't play particularly well, and I found I found it very, 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 very hard. But the the biggest thing they could do, and they did, and they've done all throughout, is just is just be there. And like Dad said before, go. Do you want to talk about it? And most of the time through that summer, I went, No, I do not. <laughs> um, and and go. That's fine. Like. Uh, and that's as that's as as simple as it is and um but i also like i think it's just that support and i'll always if they're there which they are most of the time after a game i'll always want to come and find them and and just sit and chat to them because it's also a good reminder that we've lost a game of cricket it seems like the worst thing in the world at that moment but it actually isn't there are I've still got <laughs> a mum and a dad and there was one game my dog was at and he really doesn't care. Um, <laughs> so I, I guess it, it's a, it's a good reminder, but it was, it was literate. Well, for me, it was just a case of being there asking if there was anything they could do. And like I said, a lot of the time there wasn't, but, and that's just Love it. sport. That's just life. Unfortunately. Yeah, it is. I mean, I mean, I'll, I'll concur with that, and I realise people probably don't want to hear me speak as much as they want to hear Andy speak. But, but being there is being there is important. Um, being there on the day, there was one. You know, Andy's kind of got used to. There's a, there's a period of time in your career where you 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 get into the squad, but you're not playing, and then there's a period where you get into the team sometimes, but not always. And then for Andy, there's been a period where since I don't know when she's kind of been an automatic selection well th this summer was probably the first time in ages that she actually got left out partly, partly for all sorts of reasons and again it's very easy to to come up with excuses and she won't tell you this but you know she was she's been suffering with quite a significant injury for some time which is sorted now but you know it, it would be very easy to say well you're not bowling well because of your because of your toe and because of this and because actually They've been better. Australia are a fantastic side. We mustn't forget that. There's still people in there, but it's important that, that we're there on that day when she's not playing because, because that sends the right message to her and the team that it's not just about Anya playing, it's about the whole group of people. And to be there to support before or after, just, just a few words here and there, just to be there. Um, there's still small children coming up to Anya, even though she's been left out wanting her autograph. So they haven't they haven't said you're you, you're no good anymore. We're gonna you know, they're not gonna bother with you. They still see an inspirational figure who, who plays for England, who can be a role model to so many girls, which is so important. Um, and, and it's a cliche, but but you really do learn from those hard experiences, even as an experienced international cricketer who of long standing, who's done what Anya does. It, other people can learn that in that period last summer, she went through a time where she really doubted, she may not tell you this, she doubted her ability all of a sudden. It's ridiculous when you think about it, given what she's achieved. But even a, an established international can do that. And, and it makes you wonder how, you know, even Lionel Messi, Cristiano, maybe not Cristiano Ronaldo, but you know, top players in whatever sport still must doubt themselves. And you hear the England men's cricketers who you think are so confident and so, and you see that Aussie, um, the the Test 
documentary and you hear those Australian top internationals talking, someone like Warner, who's all over the place. Yeah, he gives off this great kind of, I can just smash it everywhere. Or maybe it was um, Finch rather than Warner. But, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, there's so many things you can learn from adversity. And it's a cliche, but more than you learn when things are just going swimmingly, that's for sure. And, and I know that she'll learn from that and come back stronger and better in the future. Uh, mate, I, I think you both make some amazing points. And again, I think um, I think we forget the inner mind of, um, I'm, I mean, I mainly work with people who are parenting teenagers. The inner mind of that teenager is quite self-critical, does have doubts, does. And that, and then obviously it's quite normal in a young 20 year old and whatever to have that well. And, and that for me is why I think you've just set a lovely story of just being there and listening because um, because kids have those voices already. They don't need mum and dad adding to that. Oh, you didn't play very well, did you? What the hell was going on there? You, you, you know, do you think you'll lose your place? Do you think, that, you know, that that doubting narrative or, uh, and I think equally as bad, uh, I've yet to make up my mind, which is worse, that excuse narrative, which we, which is just such commonplace now. It was the ball, it was the weather, it was the umpire, it was whatever, rather than really good self-appraisal. Uh, and, and my kids get tired because i just start playing a tiny violin i'm like oh can you hear that tiny violin that's playing because you didn't get what you know and they're like sharp dad you know but it's like and, and and um because i can't stand that excuse narrative and i think it's allowing kids the permission to recognize that they're pretty good self-evaluators if they're allowed to do that in an honest way and and I, go on i knew you were gonna say yeah I, I, and i think it, it's being realistic because sometimes there is a difference between I guess listing something that is a fact. So uh, the best example I can think of is uh, is is bowling into bowling into a strong wind. Let's say so it, it it's being able to recognise and it's probably something I'm not very good at. I'm too far the other way in that I'll go well. I just bowled absolutely terribly, and someone will have to go well. You, like you know, you were bowling into a like a gale force wind. So it's it's being able to recognise what is. A genuine excuse and what is a acknowledgement of fact i guess yeah, yeah. And it's, um, also, it, it's also not a, it, it, it's so many times where you just have to be able to say they were better they were better on this occasion at chelmsford we talked about that game at chelmsford where meg lanning scored that one look probably look, you didn't bowl as well as you you might have done but Actually, were you allowed to bowl as well as you? No, it was an amazing innings. And you just hold your hand up and say, on this occasion, they're better. I've just got to work out how next time around, I try and get the better of her or whatever it is. You know, it's, yeah, you're allowed, other, other people are allowed to be good as well. Uh, but I also think like the, 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 like the relationship you kind of build up is so key as well. Because I remember, oh, this, was, this was years ago, I must only have been 11 or 12. 12 maybe uh, it was at a tournament I was playing for Bath it was at a tournament and I batted and I batted really well and then I got out and I probably shouldn't have got out in the way or what I did and as soon as I came off the That's pitch funny. he knows exactly the game yeah it. as soon as I came off the pitch dad said something to me about something or other I was quite happy I thought I'd batted really well and he said something to me and I remember saying not I, I remember not being very happy and basically we had a conversation about it afterwards and I was able I, I was able to go, I know what you were saying was right. You just told me at the wrong time. You told me as soon as I'd come off the pitch and yeah, dad, went, dad went, yeah, I, yeah, I know. Old. Dad went, yeah, I know. So, but even by that stage, we'd obviously kind of, we built up that relationship where I could go, look, I know you were saying the right thing, but I just did not want to hear it then. That was right thing, wrong time. Yeah, like, definitely, I was definitely right. I'm sorry. He was, he was right. <laughs> He said that afterwards. I said I didn't need you, and he was like, "Well, I was right." I was like, "I know you were, but you just said it at the wrong time." Oh, completely the wrong time. And, and, and look, I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably pleased. I'm reasonably pleased and satisfied that we can we can name one thing, one time when she was twelve. That, that's it. I got it. I got it completely wrong. It was, but it, but it was it was exactly what well, parents I, did. I, I, I don't know, Ian. I'd be kind. I'd be kinder to you that because I. I, you know, we've tried really hard to develop honesty in our household as well, so that the kids can go, Dad, not now. You, you know, yeah. and actually, I mean, as a dad, I mean, you, have, you might have lots of good things to say at that moment, but but their emotions are in a different place, and you can't always read that, can you? And no, no, you, you can't. You can't. And, and, and I know, I, 
Do you know what? It, it's kind of stuck with me because I know that I know I can picture everything about that now. Well, how many years ago is that now? 14, 15, no, 16, 16 years ago. I can tell you all the information about it because like all parents, like lots of parents do, when your child's involved, you just, just wish for the absolute best for them, don't you? You wish with all your heart that it's going to be a great day for them and they're going to come off feeling like so good about it and, and and all i did on that occasion was i let that feeling and what might have been even better cloud my thinking for the moment that she came off the pitch so rather than rather than just you know say something like you know well done well batted and and, and have that conversation at a later time I, I chose for that very moment, stupidly, and look, parents get it wrong all the time as well as kids, stupidly, just to make a comment about, you know, come on, you, you, it was, it was I, I know exactly what the situation was. She, she, she'd done such a brilliant job of getting the team back into it and then kind of threw, threw her wicket away. This is a 12-year-old I'm doing this to. It's ridiculous. <laughs> It's no, but no, no, no. Do you know what? Ian? I'm gonna. No, we all do it. We just get so caught up in the emotion of it all and wanting the best for our children. I'm sure that's where all the, all, all the parents who, who who take things a little bit too far come from. It's all from the right place. It's all wanting the best for your children, but it's but it's it's separating out your emotion from what what they're doing and letting them have the experience and, and sharing what you need to share with them. I I, like, I think you've I think. You've, you can have my job. I think you described that that far better in that. I'm going to edit just that chunk out then because I I think I think you're totally right. And I think of the times when I when I've overstepped in my parenting, it is that yearning for better for them without recognizing that they're on on a journey. And I, I you know and and, and you know because having three kids of different ages, it's recognizing that the youngest one is still allowed the time to grow up like the older ones have because they may not be there yet they'll get there and you know there's all anyway brilliant i love it guy anya ian i'm so grateful for your time i could chat to you all day um i hope to see you back at chelmsford soon anya when um a bit better hopefully <laughs> mighty fortress that is there and um uh, yes hopefully under becker's circumstances both um cricketing wise and um and kind of covid and weather and all that kind of stuff but i guys i really deeply appreciate your time i think you've both just shared some wonderful stuff. I could, I, um, um, it's, it's been brilliant. It's been a real, real privilege. I deeply, deeply appreciate it. Thank you both very, very much. Thank you. Thank you.